Now we'll be showing the experiment itself. Here is the electrical vibrator. This vibrator can be vibrated both in the transverse mode in which the uh, mechanical vibrator will be vibrating perpendicular to the direction of the uh, wave itself. Or we can take it out and turn it perpendicularly such that we can use a longitudinal wave motion when the wave will be moving parallel to the string. And this is uh, connected to the uh, frequency generator. We can actually get frequencies from almost single frequencies all the way to a kilohertz. And we have a coarse adjustment and we have a fine adjustment such that we can adjust the frequency here. And with this frequency we have got here, and this is a string. This string goes over the pulley, and this pulley we have attached a mass to this one. This mass times acceleration due to gravity will act as the tension. And if we remove the string, find its mass and its length, and the mass over the length is what is called the linear density. So we, we can change the linear density if we like. We can use a different string. And so the experiment starts where we will actually set this one either transverse or longitudinal, and then adjust the frequency as it is now being shown. It's got a 36 hertz, and this is now vibrating in two loops. So you can easily see these two loops. Uh, this is one loop from here to here, and this is another loop. It's important to make sure that the amplitude of these loops is the largest. We should adjust the fine adjustment to give the maximum amplitude. The reason for that is, the loops are entirely dependent on the resonance between the vibrator and the string. So once the two frequencies are exactly the same, the amplitude is maximum. So we can set it up in such a way that you can have any number of loops. You can have two, you can have three, and so on and so forth. So that's the tension. M over L gives you the linear density. The N gives you the number of loops. So we can plug this in the equation and calculate the frequency. And if our experiment is right, that frequency should correspond to the frequency given here. There's one interesting factor, though. And that is, when we vibrate things in longitudinal mode, it surprisingly turns out that the frequency we have calculated comes only half that of the frequency shown here. The reason for that is quite simple. In the case of longitudinal mode, the time taken for the wave to go from one and reflect back takes twice that of the normal transverse vibration. So therefore, if time is twice, the frequency is half. That's why when you measure the frequency, you will find the, the frequency comes out half of what is shown on the frequency meter. That is not to be confused thinking that the frequency is wrong. It is as it should come. So this experiment nicely illustrates the longitudinal modes in a laser beam. Well, of course, if you have got more expensive equipment where you can uh, use a uh, longitudinal mode separator and then you could have a mode locked laser and you have got the uh, you know display device, you can show those things. But for a mere understanding of the longitudinal mode inside a laser beam, this is a very good way of showing.